Tyrannosaurus six. Tyrannosaurus Rex sleeps. <laughs> lovelies welcome to the january 2021 episode of the not quite enough yarn podcast my name is leslie and this is a podcast about all yarny things knitting crochet spinning you name it probably had a go at it at some point uh recorded in the on the south coast of england hello and welcome whether you're a new viewer or returning, thank you for being here. You're very welcome. Just to give you a bit of a kind of background for those who haven't been here before, I record throughout the month and then post everything on the, on the last weekend of the month. And actually, this year is my third year podiversary. January 2018 was my first one. And we're now January 2021. Blimey. So thank you to, for those who've been with me since then. Thank you. For those who found me along the way. Thank you. Welcome all. Wow. I would like to say that since that time the stash has reduced. But we know that isn't the case. The reason why it's called the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast is... Not because I don't have enough yarn, because this is a cupboard of yarn, this is a cupboard of yarn, that's a cupboard of yarn, and that's not all of it. But I rarely have enough for a whole project. And so that's how it all started. I'd turn up at my knit group and say, well, I've put this striping because I didn't have quite enough yarn to... And so I'm a big fan of stripes and blocks and fades and finding ways to combine yarns. Like I say, record throughout the months, which means you'll see me in different places, wearing different things. Anything that I'm making, anything that I'm wearing that is handmade, I will put details in the link in the links below. So for example, this is the Ocean Shore by Drops. I made it the, from Noro, the, all the rainbow stripes are Noro. And somewhere in here I have a large cone of grey boot clay, kind of a three-ply light fingering weight yarn. So that made up the most of this. I think I have enough of that yarn to make about four of these, but I probably won't. This month is all about the prizes. Um, lots of lovely things to give away. Now I'm recording this first section on the 2nd of January. So I'm giving away the first bit at the moment, um, but later in the month there'll be the December craft along and also the other make alongs, which were the Stash Mal and the Ocean Mal from 2020. Also this year, starting a new make along. And before I talk about that, again, I just want to thank the wonderful Barbara of the Flame and Fibre podcast for two years ago coming up with the idea for the Sash Mal and for running it with me for the last two years. It has been so incredibly inspiring and I know that Barbara certainly for the first year of that was working exclusively from Stash as well. She has been buying yarn but in a much more mindful way. It's not just oh pretty buy type of yeah. So <laughs> um, so yeah, she's still continuing to work from Stash. Uh, but thank you, Barbara, for hosting that with me. Much appreciated. Um, so this year I am co-hosting another make-along with the lovely Kellyanne from the Yarn Tales by the Sea podcast. Now, Kellyanne, I know in real life. She is the leader of the drumming group that I belong to. All activities are off at the moment, of course, so we haven't drummed for a while. <sighs> but she very successfully last year ran a hat make along. So she said to me, do you fancy running an accessory make along for the year? And I thought that was a fine and marvellous idea. 
So basically that's it. Make an accessory. An accessory for the person. Not the home, I think. An accessory for the person. So hat, scarf, cowl, gloves, mitts, any kind of accessory, you're in. Don't have to use a particular stash, doesn't have to be, you know, you can buy new yarn for it, you can use old stash. That's it, just make an accessory. Has to be started by the beginning of the, um, after the 1st of January, so yesterday, as I record this, and finished by the end of the year. They're the only rules. So there'll be a finished object thread on Ravelry and there will also be a chatter thread on Ravelry. So very similar format to previous make alongs. The finished object thread will be finished objects only. Now, by all means, put a bit of description in about um, yarn you've used, where you found the pattern, if it's for you or for someone else, you know, general sort of stuff. Um, but the finished object thread is a no chatter thread, so it's just for FOs. But you can also put your FO into the chatter thread and then people can ooh, ah, and say lovely colours or where did you find that pattern and all the questions that they ask. So that will be fab. By all means, put it into Kellyanne's threads as well as mine. Um, just have to be a member of both groups on Ravelry. Now, I am aware that some folks are still struggling with Ravelry. Many improvements have been made, but I'm also aware that I think it's in March this year they're switching off the classic view. So if you are unable to use Ravelry because of the difficulties you're having due to the, um, the changes that they made last year, please email me at notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com with your finished object or your observations and you'll be included in the draw. So again, format very much the same. Uh, be drawing every quarter. On the chatter thread, it will be a pattern prize up to a, a value of $10 US. And the finished object thread, there'll be a physical prize. So a bag, some yarn, something scrummy. And at the end of the year, there'll be a draw across the whole year. I hope that all makes sense. This is one of my rambly introductions you know, I've been doing this three years. I should have got this down pat by now. But I haven't. And who's pat anyway? I digress. So, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Now, this year I will be working exclusively from Stash. When I first started the podcast, that was the intent. That I wouldn't be buying yarn. And that I would be working from Stash. Then people were very kindly giving me stuff. Thank you. I'm not at all sorry about that. And of course, last year, 2020, suddenly a lot of small businesses were hit. I was very fortunate that I was still working. Uh, I'm a funeral celebrant by day. By day, quiet, sensible, mild-mannered funeral celebrant. By night, crafter and gobby person. Um, yes, so I was still working, so I was in a position where I could support small businesses. So I bought yarn. I didn't go crazy. Um, but I am back now on the wagon. The only exception I am allowing myself is there is a fibre festival that was meant to be happening locally to me. It was meant to be in June of last year. Didn't happen, obviously. If it happens this year, I still have my ticket, I will be going, and I will be buying yarn. But that's my only kind of splurge this year. Now you may see yarns, especially this month, come through my hands, but they are prizes. They are not to add to my stash. So yeah, that's that was last year, that's this year. Those are the plans. So, shall we give some stuff away? Now, the first of the giveaways this month are the prizes massively generously donated. And the first ones were from Angela and Andy of Attic Spin Dye. This came about because 
I ordered some yarn for a project I was working on. Oh, I'm really good at throwing things on the floor, by the way. You'll get used to that. Um, I ordered some yarn from Attic Spin Dye. They recognised my name and said, would you like a prize to give away? I said, well, that's very kind. Thank you very much. And Angela has a medical condition called Ehlers or Ehlers Danlos known as EDS and she was asking um, if I wouldn't mind you know promoting a bit of that which I am more than happy to do and they have a yarn which is their rainbow zebra EDS awareness yarn which is this lovely bright yarn absolutely gorgeous and like I say this is their awareness one and they offered one of these and one of these, which is uh, in the sea glass colour. The yarn is dyed by Andy and my goodness, doesn't he do a beautiful job um, as, as prizes. So I was more than happy to talk about Ella's Danlos and throw things on the floor again and give the yarns away. Now, after that, and I will put links for the um, Ella's Danlos um association society forgive me um in the links down downstairs below the video so that uh, you can look into it um since talking about it a couple of months ago uh, a lot of you have come back and said you you have it yourself or you know someone who's been diagnosed with it and someone else was saying those symptoms kind of stack up with what i've been going through so all awareness is good and I'll do a very quick recap actually because all awareness is good so symptoms are loose unstable joints uh, joint pain brain fog and fatigue uh, gastrointestinal dysfunction tissue fragility resistance to local anesthetics these are just some of the symptoms so if you know of someone suffering with some of those this might be investigating worth investigating so we have yarns to give away thank you again to Angela and Andy and the pastel yarn in the sea glass colorway has been won by Enid now obviously the fact that these are in my hand mean they haven't got in the post yet but they will this week so Enid congratulations on winning the sea glass Judy won the brights the rainbow zebra and these feel beautiful as well as look beautiful. Well, I then had someone else get in contact and that was the fabulous Gina of Spring Mill Terrace, who doesn't have uh, Ehlers Danlos, but is familiar with other sort of hidden illnesses. And she asked if I would like another prize to give away. Thank you very much. So she offered these beautiful minis. So she is Spring Mill Terrace and we've got lots of micro minis here. She also runs the Woolly Workshop and runs spinning courses in Caerphilly in Wales. So I will put links to Attic Spin Dye and to Gina's um, businesses in the notes below and those minis have been won by Jean so congratulations to all of you uh, I got in touch with everyone who won uh, via YouTube they've all let me know their address so these are going out in the post imminently and it's lovely to be able to give them away and thank you so much to those who have offered those prizes it's in incredibly generous of you and I am extremely grateful so thank you I think that's it for this section. It's a it's a grey day here, but it's the second of January in Britain. What do you expect? And I am nearly through. I say nearly through. It probably take me another week. Um, a project that I started on Christmas Eve. I've never done a Christmas Eve cast on until last year. I didn't realise it was a a thing that people did. Usually, because Christmas Eve, um, I go and visit. My father, we go carol singing, 
in Canterbury City Centre. He lives near there. And there isn't time to kind of sit down and start a new project. But of course this year, everyone was tucked up safely at home. And so I did cast on a project, which I will hopefully show you in the next section. Or if not, the section after that. I'll definitely show you it at some point this month. Cheers. Last year I made quite a few hats to give to charity and I made them on my Addy Express King size. Take us about half an hour. So why did I need a hat this morning when I went out to walk the dog? <laughs> why did I have to borrow himself's hat? Which himself has been wearing and therefore it is rather big. So this afternoon I've made myself one. Again, on the Addy Express, so very simple and straightforward. The yarn is, oh hello, a little loopy bit there. The yarn is mostly Caron Super Soft. And this pretty much used up all I had left of this skein, so that worked pretty well. I wanted, I wanted a fluffy brim. Well, who wouldn't? And this was some yarn that I was given as part of a sort of de-stash last year. Oh, nicely, please. So that's my fluffy brim. And then I don't know if you can see that that's a little bit sparkly there. Got a bit of glitter. This section here, between two bits of carol, um, was in the the box of unknown yarn. I used to get Let's Knit magazine and they often gave away small balls of yarn with patterns for toys or small accessories, none of which I made, but you always keep the yarn, of course. And I thought the colours went pretty well together. And although it's not showing up on camera, we do have some sparkly in here. So I thought for dog walking, a sparkly furry hat would be a nice thing to have. So that's what we've got. And in the morning, when I take the dog out again, I'll have a warm head without flapping, hopefully. Um, it's 120 rows on the Addy. I did 50, 40, no, 50, 20, 40, uh, Really good at maths, me. I did 50, then 20, then 50. Now, maybe I should have done 40 of the fluffy stuff to give a deeper brim. But it's just giving a little trim. Yeah, that's quite a look, isn't it? I like the way the glasses hold it off my eyes. I can go with that. <laughs> I will keep faffing around with this. And ultimately, as long as I'm warm, that will be my main criteria. And then the phone rang. Cheers. Hello, lovely people. Now, last month I was sitting in this chair because the chair I normally sit in was loaded up with Christmas gifts. Well, I say loaded up, it had some on it. This year, or this month, it's got quite a few yarns on it and these are all prizes, prizes, prizes. Um, for the sorted make-alongs and giveaways. So more details to follow. I'm waiting for a couple more. So when I give the prizes away, I'll show you the yarns that are being given. But I'm just going to show you this one because I had said previously that I would put some hand spun into the yarn prize, whether you want it or not. And this is it. Now it's a bit of a bumper skein because it's a classic three ply and the majority of it is Superwash Polworth from Witchcrafty Lady. Look at these fabulous colours. Almas is just a, a colouring genius. She really is. Um, in my splitting and doing as a three ply, and I split the braid differently this time. So in previous... Um, spins I've split the braid down so that as I spin colours match up this time I split 
I just went from the braid I just split it into three and then just pulled from each third of the braid so I ended up with these longer stripes of colour but then they they blend against each other so I had three bobbins photograph here of the three bobbins and when I plied them together two were pretty much identical in length third one tad short so I went to my bobbin of ends and plied in some other bits otherwise you'd have been very short on it so it does mean that we've got these little pops of other colour as well because these were from earlier spins some of these are a bit thick and thin so um, it will be up to the winner to decide how they want to use this or if they just want to kind of use the main bit and leave that bit because it's not so good I will leave that to your judgment I will reskein it um, it's a little bit straggly because I haven't reskained it since I soaked it but yeah classic three ply there is how many it's 1200 feet so whatever that is in meters and divide it by three for yards would be 400 odd so 300 and odd meters I will put all the details on the ball band that I put around it but yeah very happy with this as a spin so some lucky person how you define your luck is up to you will receive this as part of their prize bundle and I hope you enjoy it it's got quite a nice soft feel to it um, unless you're very sensitive I would say it's probably neck friendly but otherwise it might work as a, a colour work contrast it's about um, sort of fingering ish weight fingering to sport weight but obviously it's for you to decide what you're going to do with it should you be the winner I mentioned in a previous section that I had cast on an item on Christmas Eve having never done a Christmas Eve cast on before and I finished it and it is this thing which I am loving this thing of beauty and wonder which is the Gabrielle sweater designed by Layla Raven thank you very much to the person who gave me the pattern it is super kind of you it's one that was sitting there on my wish list and thank you because it's I am delighted with it I really am so let me stand up and give you a quick look around so you can see it's a sort of fairly boxy shape plain back let me just give you a view of my plain back and I'll pick up my pillow while I'm there and the main detail is this central panel and I'm going to loom in large here so brace yourselves so you can see you've got this scallop pattern here which then shapes the hem as well and on the back there's a little bit of shaping a little bit of short row shaping to echo that shape actually that shows up the pattern fairly nicely because of some of the colours I've got in there there that's a much better view than my chest isn't it so this thing of wonder I, I really am enjoying it it's, it's worked out a really good weight for me to wear it's a very comfortable weight it's not too heavy but it's warm and oh I could rhapsodize and eulogize but I shan't I shall tell you about it instead lots of yarns in here now I was enjoying this so much that I just kept knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and I really wish I hadn't because I ended up having to take about a foot off the bottom of it because when I blocked it um, now one of the yarns the colour came out on my hands one of these dark yarns at the bottom um, I'll show you a picture here of my fingers with the lovely blue hue um, I'm not going to name and shame the yarn because it's one that I have mentioned in the past long ago but I know other people who've used the yarn and the same colourway without any dye coming off at all so I'm I'm assuming it was just a batch it's a very saturated color and it was just coming out onto my hands now I tried to then when I was getting ready to block it to soak it using color catcher sheets no dye came onto those sheets at all I did have a 
bit of colour in the water, not a huge amount, but nothing on the colour catcher sheet. So, based on that experiment, they don't seem to have worked, but you may have different experience of that. These yarns have been used and frogged many times and so there were lots of little balls of them. This is a picture taken inside the bag that I was storing them all in because I have tried three or four different projects none of which have quite worked and essentially I knew I had a lot of fingering four ply weight yarn in blues and I wanted to use them together but it was working out the right project and then this pattern came along and the universe aligned and it worked a treat and I am really happy with with how they all came together so these yarns are in no particular order Aracania or Aracania Ranco and that's blue with a bit of a pink sort of tinge in it the yarns of Richard de Vries, Peppino, that also has a, a bit of a pink colour in it and a slightly sort of darker blue as well. You can see little patches here. Deeply Wicked, which is from Easy Knits Yarns in the bigger on the inside colourway. And that's this dark one at the bottom here. Noro Teo. And that I use mostly in the sleeves. And you can see that I've got these kind of more definite stripes in the sleeves. And also in the body. She said lifting up her jumper again like a floozy. Um, I wanted to put some in the body to kind of match in with the sleeves in a way. Although obviously I knew the depth of the, the yarn, the stripes, wouldn't be the same. Um, in that particular shade of Teo, it has some pink. I cut that out. Um, although there are bits of pink in some of these other blues, I didn't want a big stripe of them. I wanted to keep that in the blue teal family. So, so that's that. And then I had a couple of skeins of hand dyed yarn that himself had bought me on various trips. One was a BFL. And now I'm trying to identify these now. They're all kind of they're all in the mix. It's like a delicious stew. <laughs> and there was another one called Merlin, which is a 500 metres. I think that was a merino. But all four ply weight. And in total, I used a, just over 2000 metres. So I didn't use all of the Teo. I didn't use all of the Easy Knit. But about 2000 metres. That was making the largest size. I started to do a gauge swatch and it kind of was proving difficult to get kind of just on and then I thought to myself it's a boxy shape there's a little bit of flexibility in here had I been trying to make something very fitted and tailored I would have kept persevering but as it was boxy shape and much as I love the boxy shape I don't necessarily want it to have as much excess on me as someone uh, of a much smaller frame might because you then have an awful lot of flapping around and it's more like a caftan if I were to have kind of that many inches here I'd have little sleeves like that sort of Tyrannosaurus sex Tyrannosaurus Rex sleeves <laughs> oopsie <laughs> dinosaur sleeves um, which I didn't really want uh, focus focus so so this is the sweater I made some modifications of course it is what I do um, first of all was the yarn choice the original pattern is for a worsted yarn I was using four ply weight doubled so it comes out about worsted there or thereabouts. The original pattern is to work flat so you work one piece you work the other. I decided to join it up and work in the round 
Part of the reason for that is that I often with garments do the sleeves as early in the construction as I can. This is partly so that I'm working on the sleeves which are often the bit we get kind of a bit bogged down in um, early in the project whilst the enthusiasm is still higher up uh, and also if I'm going to run out of yarn I want the sleeves to match the top and the other colours can come in lower down. So. So that was my thought process and I just found it easier to work in the round. I didn't want, because I knew I was kind of mixing and matching yarns, I didn't want a big stripe gap along the side here. I wanted it to be same all the way around. So it was fairly easy to adapt to working in the round. Um, the, the panel itself is one of those that looks more complicated than it is. Uh, I'm not going to give away the secret sauce, it's a paid for pattern, but um, it's a very easy to memorise pattern, it's a very logical pattern. After you've done a, a repeat or two, you can kind of see where it's going. So it wasn't at all difficult to then convert that to working in the round rather than working flat. The central panel was actually an interesting exercise in scaling up and down patterns because this central panel is the same number of stitches through all sizes. And if someone was making the smallest size, the central panel is a, you know, a bigger proportion of the whole than for someone making the size I did, which was the largest. And I, I was concerned initially that I didn't want this panel to look like just a little narrow stripe down the middle because it, it is the central feature of the sweater. The rest is fairly straightforward, very plain shaping. This is the star, so I didn't want it to feel like a narrow band just down the front. There are various ways of approaching that because the other thing you've got to think of is Yes, this sweater is quite a lot larger than it would be for the smallest size, but here it's not. Neck width is not massively bigger, it's not proportionately bigger. And this obviously comes from kind of the neck down. So what I decided to do was rather than try to rework the pattern and to make it a vast proportion of the, the sweater, all I did was a couple of row, a couple of stitches each side. I echoed the same reverse stocking stitch stitches. So if it was a purl on the the panel, I just purled another couple of stitches just to give it a little bit of extra width, matching with the neck width, but without rewriting the pattern. And I'm pleased with how it's worked because. A lot of the excess fabric is kind of round the side on a larger person because we're not just wider, we're, we're bigger all the way round. So it kind of worked. <laughs> and just one other alteration. Um, and when I was making it, I felt that the stitch allowance for the sleeves was going to be far too small. Now, I am conscious that because this is a boxy shape, the sleeves don't start right up by the shoulder they do start a bit of a way down. Um, so if I think about what I've taken off, they would have fitted, but I think there's a danger they would have looked like sausage skins. I think they might have been a little bit tight for me, for how I want to wear this, because I do wear it over shirts, so you've got that fabric in as well. So yeah, I did a few extra rows, a few extra stitches, and then just decreased accordingly, and I'm pleased with how that fits, so that worked for me. I'm just in love with this sweater. I really like it. Um, it was one of those that when I finished, I immediately thought, shall I make another? Well, no, I've gone on to something else, but just really enjoyed it. It, it worked. I mean, it possibly helped that it was between Christmas and New Year. I wasn't working. We couldn't go anywhere because of lockdown. The weather wasn't that great for even taking the dog out. And we're only supposed to each exercise once a day so it's one dog walk each um, so I had a lot of knitting time 
and so it rattled through at an amazing pace like I say I just kept knitting because it was on the needles and I just kept going round and round and then when I blocked it I pinned it out I started to talk about when I blocked it yes so normally <laughs> gosh that was a roundabout way of doing it wasn't it so normally I pin out anything I'm blocking and then spray with water so it's the water so soaks through it but the whole thing isn't dripping but because I wanted to see if I would get any colour out of this, I soaked the whole thing in a bowl of water and then pinned it out. So, of course, you're then dealing with something that's dripping. It's much heavier. It kind of pulls on its own weight more. After it had dried a little, I wanted to put it over a rack so that it, the air would get to both sides. And I picked it up by the shoulders and it touched the floor. <laughs> Now, when I picked it up by the shoulders, that was kind of this bit. Um, so these bits were hanging down. And as I say, it was hanging down by the weight of the water. And it was still very damp at that point. But I thought, this might be a bit long. So while just the sleeves were damp, I think it was, um, we had virtual knit night. And I still I'll try it on. I tried it on and it came down to my knees. Could have kept it as a dress. I was thinking, do I just put a belt around it and have it as a dress? I was tempted. I was tempted. But I thought, what am I more likely to wear it? Or when am I more likely to wear it? And that's as a sweater, not as a dress. So I have some consolation in that if I wanted to make a dress, it wouldn't necessarily take that long. <laughs> but for me, a sweater is better. So I took it back took a lot of distance off the bottom i may even have some footage here of how long it was so if i, if I have I'll, I'll put it in here but i took a lot off the bottom because i had used a fair amount of a skein of wool kitchen yes wool kitchen yarn and all of that is now back in the stash um because it just this is a better length for me so so this is what we've got and I am, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very pleased with it. <laughs> so yes, first FO, uh, first finished garment of the year and I'm very happy with how it's turned out. It's one I'm sure I will use a lot and even if I don't make another with the lace panel, this weight and this shape works for me so I will keep these um these dimensions and maybe just make a plain sweater or perhaps a different lace pattern or something like that but I would certainly use this as the basis for other garments I like the speed at which it works I like the way it's finished I'm just really happy with it so I'll stop talking now about Tyrannosaurus no I'll stop that Hello lovelies, I am doing here some broomstick crochet, sometimes known as broomstick lace. I'm not using a broomstick, I'm using a 25mm, which is a US size 50 knitting needle. And I'm doing this as part of the New To You Mal, which is hosted by Shevers of Chevy Rail and others. This is me making another cowl. Now I don't have in my head what yarn this is, so I'll put it on screen. But I just thought I would make another cowl, but using a different technique. So there are sort of various bits to it. The main thing is putting the stitches onto the broomstick. And all it does is hold them and also means that they're uniform in size so that when you then gather these loops together later they're more even and it's a bit like some people do a crochet cast on so you just go into the stitch I'm going to try and show you this hopefully it will work go into the stitch yarn over and just secure it on there so very, very straightforward. 
you're just picking up a loop through the stitch and hanging it on the needle or the broomstick I've heard of people using actual broomsticks or um, mop handles pieces of dowling whatever they've got to hand when I was a kid I did once think about having a go at this although I never made anything and my dad had a bit of dowling that he just tapered an end for me so that it was easier to put the um, the stitches onto you can buy broomstick handle pieces and they've got a groove in here and you'll see in a moment why that is advantageous but it's not essential so I'm just going to get to the end of this row so I'm just picking up a loop for each stitch and then I'll show you the next part All right, I'm hoping this is focusing enough so once you have the loops on the needle you then need to gather them together in groups please focus so I'm doing groups of five so I'm just picking up five loops this first one you have to be careful not to pull the yarn too tight otherwise your end loop will become a bit um, shorter like I've just done there nice one Leslie and then into these five loops you then work five stitches so I'm just doing a little chain to secure them and then I'm just doing five what I would call a double crochet if you're in the US you'd call a single crochet And that's how you create that pattern. So just work your way along the needle. So you take the next five and you can see now why a groove here would be quite handy because if these were quite tight on the the dowling or if you didn't have a tapered piece um, it helps to give you somewhere to secure your hook. But just take the next five loops and the same thing again and five stitches it doesn't have to be a double crochet you can do any crochet st stitch you like and the way I'm working this whole item and this will be a cowl like I think I just said so apologies for repeating myself is I'm doing the broomstick layer single crochet US terms double crochet US terms I'm going to do it all one and then the other because that'll be easier so I've got the broomstick layer row double treble double or if you're in the US the broomstick single double single and then just pick up again for the broomstick layer and that's that so it's quite fun. I mean, you can increase and decrease with it. It's um, it's flexible in that sense, but it just creates this lovely open fabric. Um, I've not tried it with mohair, but it would work nice with sort of soft, fluffy yarns because then that would soften all of these. It would give you a different, slightly different effect. But that is broomstick crochet on very pretty yarn. Hello lovelies. Let's go that way a little bit. Oh, excuse the mess. Hello lovelies. I'm wearing my poncho sweater by Aquanetta Ferguson and it's very cosy. But that's not what I'm here to show you right now. Gorgeous though it is. Um, I have another finished object, another crochet one. And this is a cowl, as you can see. It's the Azalea Offset Shell Cowl. Which isn't going to focus, obviously. By Darlene R. Joyce. Um, 
Now it's called the Azalea Offset Shell Call, I believe, because it's initially designed to be made out of a yarn called Azalea by Louisa Harding, which is a double knitting weight yarn. Obviously I'm... Pff, that's not going to happen, is it? So I made it using a fingering weight yarn, and this is by Lamington Lass. This is her Satin Socks yarn and it's a Merino Tencel 50-50 mix in the Hello Ducky colourway. And I'm going to take it off so you can see it, see the pattern better. So there you go, we've got these offset shells. And you can see the lovely blues and greens of this colour. Quite a nice sheen on it, which I think comes from the Tencel. Not as soft as I was expecting it to be. But not remotely scratchy or irritating, just not as soft. International symbol for soft, obviously. Um, but perfectly comfortable, nice and cosy. Now because the original pattern is for a double knitting weight yarn and on a 5mm hook, I modified it to increase the number of repeats. So if I show you the picture again, if it will focus this time, and this is a free pattern on Ravelry so I'm not giving away any secret sauce. But you can see hopefully the number of patterns. I basically added in an extra pattern repeat. Uh, she gives written instructions, but it was also charted, which I find easy to follow. Uh, I find easier to follow, I should say. And at first I thought I was gonna have some terribly complicated maths to do, but as you can see, I just had to work out where the repeat was, which really wasn't tricky. So mine has an extra column. It's worked straight and then sewn together. I also modified it by putting a shell edging around it and that's just going along the edge of the cowl um, five trebles or double crochets if you're in the UK into one place then miss a couple of stitches slip stitch five you can see what I'm doing there so yeah, another cowl to add to my neckwear collection, which is growing this year. And I'm very pleased with that. So, there we go. But now it's time for prizes, prizes, prizes. And first of all, a quick apology to Denise that I haven't posted yours yet. Sorry. But you can get a sneaky peek of it here. And so can everyone else. Um, Denise won the prize for the December make-along. And this is a skein of yarn from Rose's Knitting Shed. Hand-dyed, <clears throat> excuse me, hand-dyed in Cumbria. And it's a four-ply weight yarn, a sock yarn, I believe. Yeah, a 70%, yep, yeah, 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, 10% nylon. And it's in the poinsettia colourway. And you can see Rosie always puts extra things in. We've got sequins, we've got stitch markers, we've got a pen. So Denise, this is on its way to you. Sorry that I haven't done that yet. Because she's already let me know that she's seen what's happening. And I contacted her on Ravelry because that was run differently. That's on its way, I promise. Sorry. <laughs> But, oh dear me, <coughs> Arsenal, we have a lot of prizes to give away because it's year end and the two year end make-alongs have finished. So just a quick recap, we had the Stash Mal co-hosted with the lovely Barbara from Flame and Fibre. Thank you again, Barbara. It's It's been a lovely thing to do and I've so enjoyed sharing it with you. So thank you. And... We have prizes to give away on that and also the Ocean Mal giveaway with Kellyanne from Yarn Tales by the Sea. Thank you Kellyanne, it's been good fun. Um, so just have been loving it all and now we have prizes to give away. So the first prize, before I, I always rush ahead and then have to stop, don't I? I'm like Columbo, just one more thing. Reference for the kids there. Um, <laughs> To claim these prizes, 
you need to contact me and let me know that you've seen this. So you can contact me on Ravelry, Instagram, where I'm knitting or death. Uh, you can email me at notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com. And if you can let me know that you've seen this by the 25th of February 2021, please. So that's the 25th of February. If I haven't heard from the winners by the 25th of February, I will be redrawing. So yes, 25th of February, that's your deadline. If you can let me know that you've seen this and we'll sort out the prizes for you. So without further ado, oh, there'll probably be some ado because there always is, but let's give it a go. For the, this is the quarter four prizes, first of all. So the pattern I drew between, I did random number generator, numbers 656 to 780. And the winner was post 674, Lime Happy Cat, who's Diane in Melbourne. And she was commenting on another pattern, on another project. So Diane, if you could contact me and let me know what pattern you'd like on Ravelry up to a dollar of, um, up, to a dollar, up to a value of $10 US, that would be a fab thing. Thank you very much, congratulations. So that's 674 Lime Happy Cat, who is Diane. Thank you. Finished object prize for Q4. I went from 1513 to 1992 this is one extra than you'll see on the thread because I had um, an email as well and the winner is 1673 who is Randy Nitz and that's Randy from upstate New York who posted a picture of her stunning Strathendrick by Kate Davis so I'll put a picture of this here so this is Randy Knits. And let me show you what you've won, Randy. I've got everything in bags here, so you'll have to kind of bear with me. So that is the ocean. I know that's the... Oh, it's all very... Very lovely and abundant, which we like. So this must be it. Q4 stash winner. So Randy, you are winning this lovely yarn yard yarn. And this is um, 330 metres, 100 grams. Now this is also a Merino Tencel mix. So like this, but this is much softer. I don't know why. I don't really, you know, I'm not a, a yarn dyer. But this is from Yarn Yard. Now they are no longer dying, so this is a rare skein but I hope you like the colours because this will be on its way to you. Just get in touch and we'll get that posted. I'm not giving my address away there, but I am half of you know it anyway. So, congratulations. So on to the quarter four pattern prize for the Ocean Mal. And that went from number 92 to 97. And the winner was post number 94, Adondra, who is Margaret from Zurich. And again, responding to another post, another finished object, another item. So thank you very much, Margaret. Please do get in touch and let me know what pattern you would like. And we will get that to you. Thank you for taking part. The Ocean Mal finished object prize for quarter four. I went from number 217 to 260 and the winner is post number 249 Phoenix Fire and that's Tracy from North Carolina and Tracy posted a picture of Yulgran by Andy Satterland and she actually put a note saying it was the only thing she'd made this year that wouldn't have also been applicable to enter the stash mail. So that's on the ocean mail. So let me find this one. Q4 Ocean. And you have some more oceany type colours. This is some, I think, very pretty yarn from Twink Knits. This is hand dyed sock yarn, four ply, uh, four ply weight, 80% merino, 20% nylon, 
400 meters for 100 grams so you've got this lovely gray and blue here so tracy please do get in touch and this will be on its way to you and again thank you for taking part so those are the quarter four this bit's going to go on for a long time those are the quarter four we're now on to the year end prizes so this is for the whole year and starting off with a pattern prize for the whole year so i've gone from post number two because i did post number one to post number 780 and the winning post 409 ginger i don't know if it's bedell or bedell who is ginger from vermont and again a comment on another project so ginger congratulations please get in contact with me let me know what pattern prize you'd like up to a value of ten dollars it will be yours. Um, if any of you can't get hold of me on Ravelry, but the pattern is available on Payhip, I'm pretty sure we can make that work as well. So if Ravelry is a problem for you, and I believe it's changing at the end of March. So get in touch with me if, if Ravelry is a problem for you and we'll certainly work around it. So thank you very much, Ginger the additional prize now this is a little something that just i do and i'm calling this the not quite enough yarn prize because i did this last year a prize for someone who uses more than one yarn in a project because that's kind of my thing i mean this we've got our packer we've got one two three four different makes of um mohair I put yarns together as we know so I've put in an extra little prize for someone who does the same so I went from beginning to end so number two to 1992 again accounting for that email uh, entry that I've had and the winner is 1378 who is Shirley Knits and Shirley Knits is from Virginia and she had made this striped hat and so Shirley, you are winning two yarns. Now your striped hat was blue, so I hope you like these colors. So we've got two yarns here. We've got this hand dyed from Lime Green Jelly. And Lime Green Jelly is Jo. She started the knitting group that I go to, although she now lives in another part of the country. Some people will do anything to get away from me. And she took some West Yorkshire Spinners Signature Yarn, which is 75% wool, 25% nylon, and hand dyed it. So we've got these fabulous yarns, fabulous colours. So that's the first prize. And the second is also from a dyer very local to me, as Joe used to be. And this is from Chintz Pie Knits, who is Zoe. And this is a one of a kind grey specs it's 100% uh, sorry 100 grams high twist sock yarn 85% superwash merino 15% nylon 360 meters so Shirley I hope you like these colors congratulations on winning please get in touch with me with a postal address and we can get those to you ah, lovely I, I, I really enjoy this <laughs> mainly because I'm playing with yarns but also because I'm sharing the joy so that's lovely thank you Shirley now the stash finished object prize went from number two to 1992 and it was won by post number 24 who is little angels g2 and that's Sarah from the UK and she made a Prem baby hat. So thank you, Sarah, for taking part. Let me show you what you have won. No, that's the ocean. This is the stash. So there is a selection of things in here, which you may or may not want. I'm just saying that because I've just seen the first thing. So you will have my skein of hand spun, which I will reskein because it's a bit um, wobbly. But you will have my skein of hand spun. I hope you can do something with that. You will also have this 
from Sheep on Mars, a merino silk four ply. And this is 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% milk, <laughs> silk. <coughs> I have used milk yarn, but it's different to this. And it's 400 meters for 100 grams. A lovely sort of subtle grey there. We have, now we all know that I love Almas Witchcrafty Lady. And anyone who's seen this would have seen the fibre that um, I have got from her. But she dyes yarn as well. And this is a Poldale sock yarn. 80-20 Poldale nylon. 400 meters and just look at those colors aren't they just rather stunning and because she's Elmas and wonderful we have a little wax melt as well which I will include in the prize because I'm tempted to keep these things but I bought these as prizes so thank you Elmas for putting that in and I hope that Sarah enjoys it but that's not all you also have, and this looks odd because of the way she brilliantly packs her yarn, from Arctic Crafts, so Benta. You have this fabulous red four-ply yarn, which I'm, I mean, obviously it's just vacuum sealed. I'm not going to unvacuum it because there's no point. It's going to go in the post anyway. But I would, that's going to look fabulous when it puffs up. So gorgeous red colour there. We also have some minis. Now, I follow on Instagram far more dyers than is good for me. And I'm about to run out of battery. So we'll have a quick stop and swap here. And we're back. Yes, yeah, so I follow lots of dyers. And I noticed that uh, Rachel, who is off the fly, or fly dyed, off the hook fly, has moved from Etsy to her own shop. So I went and had a look and she had these sets of minis. Now, I bought two sets and they are two lots of four minis. But the way I've split these is that you get two matching minis. Now the way, the reason I've done this is each one is 110 meters 45 grams so i reckon with these two you can make a hat and you may and you may want to make a hat that's all the same color it's radical but it could work so <laughs> so we have two of the ready red colorway this is 80% uh, superwash merino 20% nylon fabulous color and two of the Republic colourway. So again, they're 110 metres each. So the two together is pretty much a skein of double knitting weight. They're 45 grams each, so 90 grams for the two. Very nice feel. Hopefully, excellent hat work there. And the last prize is not yarn, but I think we can say yarn adjacent. We all know I love the Gigi. Gigi is one of my heroes. And this is a Gigi made it travel cup, straight out of yarn, never. So this will also be in the prize. So a lovely travel cup there, which I hope will be useful. So those are the prizes for the stash mail which I'm now going to put away and then show you the next set of prizes. Right, so on to the Ocean Mal and the pattern prize. So this was from the Chatter Thread. I went from number two to number 97 and the winner is number nine, Solo Kitty, who is Lisa from Maine. And Lisa was showing yarns that she had planned for future projects and it was from a dyer who had sea in inspired names. So congratulations, Lisa, please get in touch and let me know what pattern you would like and we will get that to you. So now the final prize is the Ocean Mal finished object prize for the year. 
and I went from number two to number 260 and the winner is 193 who is Jen Katz this is Jen from Newfoundland and the, I'm going to show you the picture here and you may look at that and think well very nice but is it really the sea and yes it is because Jen explained the connection these are called trigger mittens and you can see that they have the thumb and the index finger free and the rest of the hand kept snugly in the mitten and they're a traditional Newfoundland pattern or design designed for um, those who hunted seabirds so the idea was you could have your trigger finger free for shooting seabirds now ordinarily and I'm not a vegetarian so this is hypocritical of me I would say I'm not sure I should condone the hunting of animals but I live near the sea and I clear more bird muck off my car than people who live inland so I'm not going to go against it <laughs> so congratulations Jen fantastic mittens lovely colour work on those please get in contact with your postal address so I can get your prize to you now I'm waiting for one more yarn to arrive uh, that's some yarn from Dusty Dimples which is on its way so there may be a slight, slight delay in getting your prize to you I will obviously keep you informed but here are your prizes so I hope you like them so again a selection of yarns we have a couple of yarns here from Sheep on Mars this first 75% superwash merino 25% nylon that's a four ply weight 100 grams 400 meters pretty speckles and we also have is that the same 75 percent yep same blend 75 percent superwash wool and 25 percent nylon four ply weight 400 meters 100 grams we've got two more of the mini sets from off the hook fly this is the peanut peanut butter and jelly colorway and we also have the menagerie colorway and because I was the first customer on Rachel's shop she very kindly sent me a pin so I shall include that in your parcel that's not focusing let's try that no I'll take a photograph of it and the last yarn that I have here is third vault yarns librarian sock so this is 25% super superwash blue face Leicester 25% nylon and this is in the Aragorn colorway and there is another skein coming from Dusty Dimples as well so looking forward to that so congratulations Jen congratulations to all the winners so if there's a physical prize here for you please get in contact with your postal address so I can get them in the mail to you if it's a pattern prize please get in contact and let me know what you'd like and we'll get that over to you and I shall ruffle that bag for a moment just to be annoying again thank you to Barbara thank you to Kellyanne for hosting the, the make-alongs thank you to everyone who took part I'm I'd like to give a prize to so many people because there are so many fantastic projects ideas and the the warmth of the community the encouragement has been really very heartwarming so thank you very much and congratulations to the winners again get in touch by the 25th and a big thank you to everyone so this year it will be the accessory make along co-hosted again with Kellyanne of Yarn Tales by the Sea and I will start the thread from this weekend so that if you've got a, an accessory that you started after the 1st of January that you want to include fill your boots as they say <laughs> or particularly their socks I suppose yeah anyway 
A massive thank you to everyone who took part. Congratulations to the winners. Let me know where I can send the prizes to you. Cheers. Hello lovely people. And thank you also to Corey of iRockknits who I know has uh, put a few people aware, put a few, made a few people aware of me and some of you have found me thanks to her. So thank you Corey, that's really appreciated. Um, yes, that's, we're at the end of a month and I'm losing all coherence. Uh, I had a message on the vlog from, I think it was Catherine, asking what my favourite crochet cardigan was. So I thought I'd wear it. It's my Liz Vierke by Bay and Berger in Designs. And yes, I'm very fond of it. And I, I did make two at the time. Well, what the second was modified, but um, very much based on, on this. So it's a kind of almost a waterfall. It's um, using different stitch heights to give a kind of flow to it. So I like it very much. I'm not sure it goes with this shirt, but I don't really care. So... <laughs> So a big thank you for sticking it out this long. I will put the uh, threads up for the new make along, the accessory mail. So if you've got an accessory on the go and we're running this all year, then by all means stick it in there. As always, dipping with other make alongs is allowed. So for example, I know that Mars of Hey Brownbury along with other podcasters is running I think that was Neen, Mina from uh, Knitting Expat, Grace, Babbles Travels, there may even be a fourth if there is and I've forgotten who it is then, then apologies. Uh, they are running a fluff to stuff mal so that's taking fibre, spinning it with a specific project in mind if you can and then making that project. So if that happens to be an accessory, that is also a welcome part of the um, of this make along as well. Uh, I think we'd have to say, can you enter it once you've made the accessory? Just making the yarn isn't quite fitting in with, with our mouth. Talking of spinning, not done so much this month. Um, it's been bit very busy with work. Um, as you can imagine, there are a lot of funerals at the moment. And that means that I'm doing a lot of calls with families, Zoom meetings and so forth in the evenings, which is usually my crafting time. And also I'm spending weekends catching up on the writing. So not as much crafting being done. I have got some very pretty fibre on the go at the moment, though. These are Rolags from Needle and Fred. That's not me speaking badly, they're called Needle and Fred. Yes, Fred, not Thread, Fred. I'll stop saying those words, Leslie. Um, beautiful rainbow Rolags. I've got about half of it on the wheel. And also, I've pulled the Rolags out, I've drafted them out to spin from. And I, I know some people put them into little nests, I put them into a box. And I just think this looks so pretty in the box that I'm sharing that with you too <laughs> so I think that's probably it for the month thank you as always for being here for comments for letting me know how you're doing uh, for liking subscribing and for all those sorts of things really do appreciate your time and my main hope is that you're all keeping as well and as safe as you can hope the crafting you're doing brings you happiness but I hope especially that you're keeping safe and well so thank you everyone take care see you Friday if you watch the vlog see you at the end of February if you watch the podcast and if you're one of the lucky winners I say lucky you've earned it but congratulations and if you can let me know by the 25th of February um, that you're claiming your prize, that would be fantastic. Take very good care, everyone. Keep safe, keep well, look after yourselves. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.